good afternoon uh, everyone and welcome to our uh, wmg monthly group colloquium today it's my pleasure to introduce our uh, great speaker professor uh, sk paul uh, from the department of mechanical engineering at iit karakpur india uh, he has previously held the position of lord kumar bhattacharya chair professorship in manufacturing at iit karakpur he is the founder chairperson of the center of excellence in advanced manufacturing technology an organization with the purpose of solving industrial problems in addition to his role as a visiting professor at university of connecticut usa he also holds a visiting professorship at the university of huddersfield united kingdom he has published more than 300 articles out of which 200 are peer reviewed journals 15 international book chapters and 97 conference papers his innovation low cost artificial intelligence solution for meteorological inspection is selected in the top 3 by india's lab to market initiative as a result of his collaboration with tata consultancy services he holds two joint patents with tcs he is, also, he is also the author of the test book, Digital Twin, Fundamental Concepts of Applications in Advanced Manufacturing. He has supervised so far 24 PhD scholars and also currently supervising 13 students. Most of his students have obtained uh, faculty positions in some of the research institutes and academic institutes in India. Professor Paul successfully executed a large number of projects worth more than 10 million UK pounds. And he is also having another uh, uh, role as Associate Dean of Alumni Affairs at IIT Karpur. In recognition of his uh, outstanding contributions to the science and technology, Professor Paul has been awarded the prestigious Indian National Academy of Engineering Fellowship. He has been featured in the list of top 2% research researchers around the world published by Stanford University ranking 2022. You know, before I uh, talk about the industrial AI, I'd like to give an introduction to uh, my uh, alma mater, that is IIT, you know, the Kharagpur. IIT Kharagpur is, uh, uh, is the first IIT, uh, you know, IIT stands for the Indian Institute of Technology, and this is the first IIT established in 1951, and it is established close to uh, the, uh, you know, Calcutta. So it's under approximately 150 kilometers from, from Kolkata, presently called it as a Kolkata. It's the eastern part of, uh, you know, India. This is the largest, uh, the academic technical campus, 2,100 acres. We do have 25 departments, eight school, 21 centers, and student strength is 16,000, you know, so slightly more than 16,000 students, and approximately 750 faculty members. Getting into undergrads program at IIT Karpur is considered as the, the toughest examination in the world, IIT JE uh, exam. We do have uh, the international collaborations with large number of universities across the globe, our institute has been considered as the Institute of Eminence by Government of India in 2019. So this is the first IIT, largest IIT, biggest IIT. Now I'll introduce uh, uh, our Center of Excellence in Advanced Manufacturing Technology. This has been established in 2018. 2017, I visited uh, many industries in the India along with my faculty members. Uh, as per the directive of the institute and to establish the research platform uh, which would be catering to solve the industrial problems now in this regard i visited uh, wmg i had the opportunity to meet uh, lord kumar bhattacharya as well and uh, the the basic principle working principle follows the uh, footprint of wmg so it's an industry academia collaborative platform dedicated purely to industrial, solving industrial problems. We do have the industry's presence, mostly the Tata group members, and also the public sector organizations like HEC, PHEL, and GRSE and CELL. So they are the public sector organizations. Along with that, the Tata groups like the TCS, Tata Consultancy Services, Tata Motors, 
Tata Motors is, uh, is now owning the JLR, Tata Sons, Tata Steel, Tata MD. So with this presence of these industries, we started the journey from 2018, and uh, we completed the phase one, you know, the projects. Phase one projects was the five-year projects. It's a project-based R&D center. The vision of the center was to, you know, uh, to work on the digital concepts, modern concepts, to bring innovation into the field of manufacturing, and also to create an ecosystem between the large industries, small industries, and academic institutes. So uh, in India, the presence of uh, the industry in the academic arena for the solving the day-to-day -day problems is not that severe. But we all understand this because of this digital era where the uh, industry, academic institutes do have the much control. So this presence is very much needed. The coexistence is very much needed. So with that vision, the Center of Excellence uh, has been established at IIT in uh, the Kharagpur. So from day one, we have been getting the industry's problems, funding, solving, you know, jointly. And at the same time, we were giving training uh, to micro, small, and medium enterprises. Micro, small, and medium enterprises in India is very much strong in the manufacturing GDP. It is, uh, you know, for the reported that around 80% of the manufacturing GDP in India comes from the micro, small, and medium enterprises. But unfortunately, the micro and small enterprises in India is not digitally savvy. And today's era, manufacturing era, everybody is talking about the digital technologies, digital intervention. So these micro and small enterprises need to be digitally savvy and so that they can be in the supply chain for the big industries to make the uh, you know the process very much industry uh, the oriented and at the same time to make the product at the zero limit we have been giving training as i mentioned and whatever the uh, the in the ipr the intellectual property so that is getting jointly secured between the iit kharagpur and then partnering industries for this, we have been collaborating with the international institutes as well. So this is the vision of this, you know, the center of uh, the uh, the excellence in advanced manufacturing at IIT Kharagpur. If we look into this, the TRL technology readiness level, our presence is basically the TRL four, five, and six. So we'd like to work on the fundamental, the the concepts or the proof of concept that is getting generated in the academic institutes or amongst the various faculty members of IIT Kharagpur that can be taken up, translated towards the, uh, the manufacturing deployment or the business deployment, that is the TRL-7. So for this, uh, the, uh, our center of excellence is working in this value of the day. The, this, while doing this, we are uh, basically uh, making the our talent the ready for the direct deployment onto the industrial domain this center is a self sustainable center we do not get any fund from the institute regarding its recurring cost we generate fund by ourselves and this fund is generated through executions of the industrial projects training workshop and outsourcing the facility outsourcing of our you know sophisticated facility was very much there before the COVID, but now again we are after the COVID we are again picking. So this the fund which is getting generated is utilized to new facility creation, research, you know the funding and manpower funding as well. The current uh, the projects, if I see the these are the five excuse me five thematic areas: materials, automation, additive manufacturing, industry 4.0, and healthcare. So associated industries are also mentioned. So one of the vibrant uh, the areas out of the five is the industry 4.0. We are also very much, uh, you know, the uh, very much uh, the resource in the field of the additive manufacturing as well. Now, the purpose of this seminar is not only to create an awareness uh, in the minds of the researchers. Uh, the potential of AI for industrial deployment, 
it is also to uh, you know build collaborations uh, with the researchers of you know the wmg and and across the globe we do have uh, the very good infrastructures we would like to share our resource we'd like to you know work together exchange our knowledge so that we can innovate and we'd like to uh, have more and more you know the funding opportunities through writing projects jointly to various various ministries like the indo uk uh, or uh, or many other uh, you know the uh, the apply research platforms and all so so that it can be a win win situation at the both at, at both ends now while setting up the center of excellence we realized that the facility has to be the industry scale if you travel across the indian institutes you'll find the equipments are all lab scale now upscaling the academic innovation into the in, and putting it into the industrial practice it becomes very much difficult if you don't have the the facility which are of industry's nature so that's why we created the sophisticated uh, the facility like the hybrid additive manufacturing which can print an object close to 1 one meter length metallic objects of the different materials we do have the different types of the cnc machines our welding facility is really state of the art all robotized machines connected with fitted with the sensors we can collect the data and also the robots for various other activities we do have the uh, robotic mig dig welding facility integrated with the job positioners real time we can collect the data for welding different types of the materials not only the similar and also the dissimilar materials lot of applications are there in in automobile industries like the spot welding laser welding so our facilities are at the real state of the art that can be deployed if you go ahead for the joint research collaborations and at the same time to solve the industrial problems we do have a very sophisticated laser vibrometer robotic vibrometer which can scan a large object like a car if the car is car undergoes the vibrations and then how to detect the level of vibrations and find out the the location of the vibrations through the robotic uh, the vibrometer uh, the deployment now we are looking for the industry funding so that we can make it much more effective for simulating the dynamic road conditions as of now we do have the the static foundations we'd like to aspire and dream of like creating facility like the polytech in in germany so that direct body excitation of road simulator can also be uh, you know the uh, the install at our facility and cater the industry's problems now i'll come into this uh, with this introduction i'll come into the, the actual topic the the artificial intelligence in industrial research now this uh, the topic the slides which we have created is purely out of my experience in you know while interacting with the various industries in within our country and also the outside and executing the projects uh, for various industries and all. now if you think that why uh, ai is very much needed into the manufacturing domain it is uh, it is basically to gain insight and create awareness so that we can make our industry's resilience if you think of the uh, any industry during before covid and after covid the perspective has got changed any industry wherever it is it has got the location either in uk usa or in india you will find they have become much more resilient to tackle different sorts different uncertainties so ai is playing a lot of role to get the insight about the process what is happening to collect more and more information about the process so that the process can be the industry can be made more resilient we can create a smarter product so that the product can comes the the, the out of the process the zero defect we have to make the pro product cheaper because the market has become very much competitive and it has to have a very high productivity as well so in order to solve these issues these four issues the four these four issues are very very burning and competitive and for that the awareness or the insight or the data collection is very much important in the industrial domain and that's why ai has got a very much strong role to play now i would like to mention about these what are the areas what sort of 
the uh, uh, you know the benefits it can bring into the industry if the AI is deployed. First thing is that the automation and efficiency. It can increase the efficiency. It can increase the productivity if we get to know more about that process. When you have the the large number of data, obviously the understanding on their awareness will be much more better. Predictive analysis, you can, you can find out what is going to happen, whether with the process or with the product. And depending on the health of the machine, you can also you know, the assess how much risk is involved, how much modification or the modification in the process that you can make it. The today's market is very much you know, the customer oriented, unlike the previous, you know, the day. Customer has got a lot of demands and all, and these demands needs to bring a lot of flexibility in the process itself. So the AI is very much needed for the, uh, for, to tackle the demands of the, the customers uh, in, in, in the market itself. The process has to be the optimized, whether you need to know whether it is working in the, uh, on the right process parameter or not. You, you know, you for once you have this information, you can go for the innovations as well. You can make your system more and more autonomous. The involvement of the human being will be much less. And at the same time, you need to you need to be very much careful about the data that you are collecting. So large number of the data, so that has to be the secure. So the companies, the the data has to be very much protected. Now. What is, if we know, if we understand that that is the potential, but what is the drawback? What is the lacuna? As of now, the survey says that 70% of the company executives believe that AI will have a very significant impact in the business. 64% have already deployed, you know, the started investing, but still there is a fear. 36% industries fear the whether the AI can be the, the what modules or the, the 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 methodologies of the AI can be very easily integrated and made compatible with the existing systems. When 3.7 trillion US dollar has been projected to get invested by 2035, so you see that all these figures are very much you know the uh, forward looking. But at the same time, there are some concerns raised by certain sec in, in the industry, uh, the executives. That is the 36 percent, which is a very high, you know, the the number. Why is this number so high? Number is so high because the most of the you know the industries as of now they are running with the legacy the machines. They are not highly automated. If I consider India's perspective. Even the medium and large industries where they've started investing huge amount uh, for the AI deployment, but still the micro and then small industries, which is basically the backbone of the India's GDP, they are the manual process, manual labor in intensive process oriented. So the whatever the infrastructure is there, that is very uh, the old fashion. So how the automation can be brought in, how AI can be uh, figure in, in, in those processes. Then we don't have that much of domain expertise in the micro, small, and medium enterprises because they are very small in, in terms of the, the manual, uh, the strength, the work power strength. So the, the person who is running the organization, he may be the, uh, the owner of that. And at the same time, he may be the finance uh, the authority. He may be the, the, the researchers. So the domain expertise is very much, you know, the required domain expertise in, in a process and at the same time, integration, seamless integrations with the AI. Now we collect a lot of data from the industry, but how much the data is relevant, whether the data is complete, whether the data is unbiased, whether the data is having very high signal strength, not so much noisy. So that is that also brings a lot of concern these days. We are putting sensors at each and every place of the organizations. It is generating the data, but how much the correct or the, uh, the pure the data is so that it, the models can be developed or insight can be generated out of the data. Manufacturing scenario, we all know it is very much complex. A lot of variability is there. The model that you have developed, they're developing, 
let's say in case of the milling process may not be applicable for the turning process even though the both the processes are very much the similar that is the shearing process so lot of complexity is there lot of variability is there so penetrating in developing a uh, an ai model and penetrating into the manufacturing domain as a generic solutions is very very, very much difficult so ai solutions are as which are available as of now not very strong so these are the difficulties are posed uh, and that's why the 36% the industrial uh, the companies fear the whether the integration should be very seamless or it will be compatible or not if i see the manufacturing presence of the ai these days it is there in the logistics industries have started implementing it is there in the predictive maintenance process automation mainly the robotic process automation cyber security and quality assurance these are the these are the sector sec, sec, sectors or the units in the manufacturing domain why ai has started playing role and it is bringing fruits as well so if we see the, the ongoing research if we survey the literatures and all we find that the ai is there for the process monitoring for the image processing data analytics robotics and automation creating digital twins to have the future predictions and all and people are also started thinking towards the industry 5.0 that is the cognitive ai so having this you know the the, the this sort of applications if you look into it each of these applications very carefully you will find that the solutions are there but they are not very technologically very having very high readiness level so we have to develop solutions which are having the technology readiness level at least seven people have started doing research lot of solutions are there those are up to the technology readiness level 3 report says that ai based solutions for manufacturing industries 80% of such solutions are having low technology readiness level that means maturity is not there so the technology you know the upscaling or the ai based model upscaling and to de deploy it into the uh, manufacturing or the industrial domain lot of tweaking is very much the required lot of the uh, the testing is very much required so if i let us look into the process monitoring and 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 control now we we have surveyed and got to see that the ai has pervaded into the almost all sorts of manufacturing domain like casting for being process domain i'd say the casting for being building machining and in additive manufacturing and lot of because of the deployment of the sensor these the sensors cost has come down so lot of generated data has been collected and people are working frantically on the ai ml and dl methods to extract the uh, meaningful feature so that process can not only be monitored and also controlled because unless we cannot control the process we cannot make the product zero defect so the process has to be the control if something goes wrong the process has to change its parameter automatically to come up with the you know the the defect free product in the downstream because the survey we made a survey and got to see that the the you know the the cagr the increase from 2019 to 2025 is 9.2% in the process control market across the globe and it 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 covers the It all, almost all sorts of the 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 manufacturing sectors, specifically the automobile, aerospace, electronics, constructions, and food and beverage industries. But again, the concern which I have made, which I mentioned, that the product has to be the the zero defect product, consistent product, early detections, and optimization. These are the concerns of these industries, and these cons concerns are coming up because of the manufacturing the characteristics of the manufacturing process. so if i want to deploy ai or ml into the manufacturing domain i need to understand what are the features of the the ai ml model that i am going to use and what are the typical characteristics of the manufacturing problem statement that i am going to solve 
if I can make a proper gelling or the marriage between the feature of the models and the characteristics of the process, then the success lies there. So it has to be the less human intensity. The process has to be adaptable for various cases. Technological integration has to be there. Different technologies would be involved so that it can, the, and it can also, it should be a low cost, the solutions. And, in, and it, be, it can solve the complexities of the manufacturing group. So we started working with the, uh, the as from day one, uh, the industries, and we have developed a solution uh, which is very high technology readiness level for the real time well process quality control. We had taken the example of the friction star welding because we do have the very good facility of friction star welding. And so as a case study, we had taken up our friction star welding laboratory is the biggest laboratory in India. We do, uh, you know, the so friction star is welding is a solid state process. So when welding, so if the defect comes up, how can you mitigate the defects without the manual intervention? So we collected sensors data and developed the AI model. The AI models were run in the age and also in the cloud and the real time, almost in the near, real time, near real time, the machine got, got the feedback from the AI model about the prediction that what is the strength it is going to predict. So, and for that, what should be the new process parameter to, to enhance that the well strength. So this has been developed with the, uh, the, with the support from the Tata consultancy services. We do have US patent, we do have uh, many publications came up jointly with the Tata consultancy services. And we wrote a book also with the support from the, the uh, you know, Tata consultancy services on digital twin. Apart from that real-time process control, we have been working on many other fields which are having high and then low technology at the readiness level. We have developed a solution for the gearbox condition monitoring that has been deployed in the industry in the first phase of our, uh, the, you know, the project. Uh, the technology readiness level is nine. We have work, started working on the real-time process monitoring and control in, in the wire arc additive manufacturing. We have experienced that the warm process is coming up in a big way in the additive manufacturing uh, for the large structure printing, and uh, the for the different. And we are also innovating the uh, the friction star welding process and deploying it into the many many other uh, the product development such as the bimetallic tube uh, fabrication out of the friction star based back extrusion process. It's a very innovative process we have uh, come up with and the how the aluminum and then copper tube consistency uh, can be maintained and uh, for, through the, uh, the AIML. If I look into the machine vision and image processing, you know, as of again, the lot of uh, the, the, it has got a lot of applications, uh, not only in the automobile industries or aerospace industries, many cases you can, uh, you know, find, find its applications. Now, the traditional image processing has got a lot of, you know, the problems and which cannot solve the uncertainties in the, or the complexities in the industrial things. Traditional process, con, you know, image processing of, uh, process mainly work on the template, you know, the matching or the playing with the RGB values and all. So understanding these difficulties, we are deploying more and more the deep learning based methods to solve the various industrial problems. So this is uh, uh, the software we have developed for the welding defect analysis from the radiography, that is the X-ray images. Now, as of now, conventionally, the X-ray images, for once the welding is done, people go for the non-destructive testing, and the X-ray image is characterized uh, the, by the human, the radiation safety officer, level two radiation safety officer. So it is very much subjective. It is very much time consuming. Garendri Shipbuilders, which is under the Ministry of Defense, approached us. We developed a, uh, the software named as the iWeld, uh, Intelligent Weld Inspector, which can read the X-ray, um, you know, the, for, for the welding and can identify whether it's a defective weld or non-defective. It can localize, it can classify, it can measure what is the severity. And based on the protocol, various types of protocol, like the ISO protocol or NES protocol, it can also finally tell whether it's a defective or non-defective and automatically generate the report. This software has been handed over and garden shipbuilders and engineers, 
that is the, under the Ministry of Defense, they may, they fabricate the, in the shapes for Indian defense. They are using it on daily basis. So now there is no manpower need. So you can understand this potential that large number of images, uh, you know, number at this moment, it can read around 30 to 50 images at a time, depending on your computer, the capacity and process it uh, within a, a few minutes time and generate the report. So the, they have tested it on large number of you know, the data and when they got convinced, it has been certified by the Indian Register of Shipping. So we have, quali we have fulfilled the protocols of ISO and the NEA. We have recently got a project from the Tata Motors for, from, from, for the tire text detections. Like where, what is the specification of the tire which is getting fitted onto the different uh, the vehicles that they want to record and they want to do the downstream analysis. So they asked us to develop a mobile app, which we will uh, you know, capture the image of the text of the tire when the tire is getting fitted. So they will get to know that the, for a corresponding, uh, for a particular vehicle, which are the tires getting fitted, what is the location of that? And if you go for the changing of the tire, and if you know the terrains that the, tire, the vehicle is passing through, because these days, cars are coming up with the GPS system. So you can find out that how many kilometers it has traveled, what are the terrains it has traveled, and what is the frequency of the, uh, the tire replacement. From that, you can do the downstream analytics that what should be the quality of the tire they should use. So this software, we are developing it. We have already uh, gone up to the level of uh, TRL level of six. So we this software will be handing over to the Tata Motors before the, uh, the deadline. The center of excellence in advanced manufacturing technology is being treated by the Indian companies as a vendor because our performance, we understand this industry's concern. So we understand the industry's urgency and start working from the day when we start the discussion, even though we don't get the funding from the industries. We come up with the TRL3. Once we come up with the TRL3, again, we go back to the industries and de demonstrate the, our lab scale you know the performance and then we get the project in this modality of course we are investing time free of cost initially to develop up to that trl3 our students are very passionate hardworking, intelligent brilliant and that's why we can develop this sort of with the high trl and uh, then our success rate or getting the projects is becoming it is increasing we, as uh, Dr. Sirangam has mentioned, we developed a solution, very low cost solutions to identify the product quality, to check the product quality. Industries do the product quality check through the sampling. They cannot check the quality of each and every product when it is in a mass production. But simple, uh, the image processing based, uh, the application and our solution is the low cost because we depend on the webcam. We do not want to invest more, you know, the high cost on the, the camera or any other uh, the infrastructure. Because I, I, mean, I mentioned at the beginning, micro and then small, this sector in India is not that much of having, having a big pocket. And if I want to, you know, the, the uh, mold them to adopt the industry 4.0 concept, so I need to come up with the low cost solutions. And we work more on the sophisticated AI methods to enrich the low quality image and make it at par with the quality which can be captured by high quality camera. And these sol solutions we participated in all in WCC AI competition and all. Manufacturing industries, uh, you know, the even though automation, if you, if you go across, you'll find that it's automation is purely the PLC based. But if you want to make your system resilient, you have to make your system smarter, flexible, then it has to be an autonomous system. And for autonomous systems, you have to make your, the control intelligent. That means you cannot ensure the, the, the product, the orientation in the conveyor belt, the time of coming in the conveyor belt, all these things, you cannot, you cannot ensure a fixed time or the fixed orientation. So, Having this sort of concern, how the AI can tackle this situation, for that our research is. This we have filed a, you know, the patent as well. We have solved many such solutions which are having high, high technology readiness level and a lot of applications, like the printed circuit board. 
you know, the printed circuit board has got a lot of micro features and how to find out those, you know, the micro features uh, in the real time. So we filed a, you know, the patent on the PCB board. We, we filed a patent on the fuse box assembly. This has got a lot of applications in the assembly, assembly for any sort of product development. Inspection of the chassis dimensions. Presently, it is getting done by conventional methods, by manual methods. That is putting a thread, measuring through a thread, putting at one end and extending it to the other. In that way, they, they you know, they measure it. Lot of the applications are there where you need to do the product counting and at the same time whether the right product is coming up. An example is the grid uh, in the lead acid battery manufacturing and in the Excite battery, uh, car battery manufacturing in India. They are the number one car battery, you know, lead acid battery manufacturer in India. So they are worried that what is the product count, whether the, all the products are coming uh, defect free or not. So we developed a solutions, again, low cost solutions using the webcam and demonstrated at their plant. So the technology readiness level is seven. Now, these sort of solutions, which are having high technology readiness level, can be very easily tweaked or further trained by using a more number of the data and all, and it can very easily reach to the industrial domain. Welding is always, uh, it, it has been a concern for the fabricating in the industries. Even though people are deploying the robots, but the training the robots for each and every welding is a difficult thing. We, when we go for the welding of the, you know, the, or the joining of the different components, we assume that the components are properly manufactured. But the, because of the manufacturing machining uncertainties, they may not be perfect. Somewhere the gap would be more, somewhere the gap would be the less. How does the robot get to you know the know that whether the gap is more and then accordingly I need to pour more you know the weld material over there and somewhere the gap is less I have to pour the less material to make the weld you know the you know the uh, proper. So we came up with a low cost solution again webcam based in the solutions and uh, the we came up with a publication publication a very good journal international journal of computer integrated manufacturing. This is uh, this has been tested. So the high technology readiness level, we can uh, very uh, quickly penetrate into the industrial domain as well. Spot welding has been a concern for the automobile industry specifically, because the spot welding is an instantaneous process, judging the quality and changing the process parameter instantly for a particular spot is, is not possible, it's difficult. It's absolutely not possible. What the, at the most, what you can do, whether the next spot is coming up properly or not, that has you can ensure. So for that, what we are doing is the, we are collecting data from the sensors. So whether the plates are properly matched or not, whether the electrodes are properly aligned or not, if the electrodes are not properly aligned, then before welding, you can change the you know, oil parameters. If the uh, oil parameters like the current, like the, the force, and, and then you can have a control on the well strength. We have given the example the images of the, uh, the nugget zone when there is no misalignment. And if you see the, when there are the misalignment is happening, that is between the, the two electrodes, so the well quality differs. So our students have uh, come up with a very good study uh, the, for the detection of the electrode misalignments and its, in, in, its impact on the joint quality. Many such solutions, you know, that we have developed, I'm not going into those details, but has got the industrial uh, the relevance. If you see all these problem statements and all, you'll find that each and every problem is the industry oriented. Similarly, for the data analytics, the, uh, the load of sensors are getting deployed, how to, uh, what sort of the signal processing has to be deployed, how to identify the data, how to collect the data, how to clean the data, how to analyze the data, and how to interpret the data. All these, you know, the connect, these five dots needs to be connected to come up with a proper data analytics model. And our students have developed a software, completely uh, indigenously developed software, which is now, you know, there has become a competitor to the commercially available software for the vibration data analytics. We have developed a software and deployed in the cloud and working on the real-time data of Bocaro steel plant 
uh, in India. So their sintering plant, the all large number of the, the sensors are integrated. Good number of sins in, you know, exhaustor fans are there. Exhaustor fans frequently fail. They don't know why the fail is happening. So our students have collected the data and then understanding the pattern and then in the other, you know, the relation features. So they have developed a software named as the IVIV insight to the vibration and deployed it into the uh, Bokaro steel plant. It is, it has, it is giving the early prediction than commercially available software and much more the uh, exhaustive, you know, the, the idea. We are in the process of designing uh, the, uh, you know, the filing for the patent. I have given you the example of the welding data quality, well, sorry, the well defect analysis uh, from the radiograph images, but many industries do adopt the ultrasonic, the data. That is the, uh, so now the ultrasonic data, how it can be analyzed. So we have, our students have developed a software, the named as the IQFD type of flight diffraction data. So that data can be uh, the analyzed through the AI because as of now it is manually done and our solutions is AI based. It is 30 to 35 times faster than the manual methods. We filed a patent and within very short period of time, six and a half months time, it got granted. So this is the only software available as of now, which can the annotate, identify and annotate the defect, the measure the defect, and then apply the protocol and say whether it's an acceptable defect or rejectable, uh, rejected. And it can generate the the report as well. This we are uh, the uh, going ahead uh, for the industrial development. So our students are thinking to spin off uh, and form a startup and then go ahead with the product. Quickly, I'll give you some examples of the robotic application. As I mentioned, that the automation is inevitable and for the uh, the industry 4.0, but the automation has to be the autonomous system, like the robotic system. Robotic system has to be autonomous. So real time, the robot has to know what is happening and accordingly it should work upon that instead of the hardcore PLC based programming. So our you see that the jobs are coming up at different location, different orientation, robot fitted with a small camera, get to see and orients his gripper and then goes there exactly and picks it up. So uh, the various uh, types of material handling uh, the uh, application this you see this video you see that and appreciate that how efficient the this application is it's a real time deployment i mean data collection image processing data communication to the cloud you know instructions given to the controller of the robot and robot actuation all these things are happening within the cycle time of the of the object the handling so i'm throwing objects at different locations of the uh, at different orientation, and robot fitted with a small camera goes exactly to the same location and picks it up. Now these are having uh, the, this is lab scale thing. It is actually the TRL, I would say the TRL four, but it is this, this sort of activities can be very fast, you know, brought into the manufacturing domain or the industrial domain, uh, crossing the value of death. Similar uh, other applications in the uh, robotic domain, like the industrial data collections is a very, uh, very difficult job. So how to train a robot with a small number of the data and uh, the similar other applications. I am not going into details because the time is short. We have been also working on the digital twin development of the digital twin, both the data driven model and then physics driven model. Collecting data uh, from the sensors, deriving physics and then clubbing. But when you talk about this physics driven or the hybrid, uh, you know, the uh, digital twin, the extracting the information from the simulation is has been in the real time is a challenge. So our students are working on how to reduce the uh, the simulation time, uh, you know, the time. So that's why uh, the even though people uh, people very much convinced that the hybrid digital twin is the sol only solution because a lot of uncertainties is there. If you want to understand, if you want to reason, if you want to interact, uh, if, if the system wants to, uh, if we want the systems to interact with the other systems, then model has to have the, uh, the you know, the physics based information. So we are deploying this sort of the digital twin model for various applications, inclu including the, uh, the welding process, resistance spot welding process, where we have seamlessly integrated the census data and your 
the simulation data. As of now, welding the temperature data has been uh, included, but we are now in the process of including the stress distribution and strain distributions as well. When you talk about the digital twin and its, uh, you know, the scalability, the digital twin has to be developed in such a way that component digital twins can be made available in the form of libraries. If I want to uh, the develop a digital twin of a motor, motor is con consists of several components. Each and every component must have its own digital twin that can be uh, plugged in and work seamlessly. Unless we come up with this, you know, the, the, uh, the prime twin level concept, it would be very, very difficult to develop a digital twin for a system because system is, is, uh, is a collection of, you know, the, the various components and each and every components, maybe uh, there will be a lot of subcomponents uh, uh, there. So we had written a, uh, the book on, on the digital twin and uh, this is getting a lot of citations. This is one of the books, uh, you know, the downloaded at a very fast level, approximately 20 downloads per day since it's, uh, the, uh, it's launch in the spring jet. Now I'll quickly talk about the industry 5.0. I'll beg only five minutes, five to 10 minutes more from Dr. Sirangam and from the audience as well. And we'll see that the, what is the concern of the AI? Why we are worried about the AI? How much it has pervaded into the manufacturing domain? Whether we should, what or which, how we should take this, you know, the, the, this in intervention forward and to come up with the industry acceptable level. Now, a lot of people are working. If you want to make actually the system resilient, then you need, you should have the human in the loop when the AI is working. That means human and AI should work collaboratively so that it can increase the productivity, it can solve the complex problems, and it can also tackle the safety concerns. Because AI has got the features of the, uh, the lot of the aspects which the human being doesn't have. But still, those, you know, the AI model which we are using, they are not very much uh, the, uh, the capable in solving the complex task. If you see the functionality of the brain, and there are a lot of physical, you know, the investigation has been done. So the functionality of each and every component of the brain has been understood by the neuroscientists. And computer scientists has come up with some artificial models, but the artificial models are not fully depicting the functionality of the brain which the neuroscientist has come up with. So that's why these models needs to be further tweaked. And this tweaking is very much crucial for the manufacturing applicability and all. So we are thinking that the artificially intelligence manufacturing models or where only the models work on the, the data or maybe the data plus the physics, it may not give you the complete, you know, the, the information. Somewhere in the loop, the human has to be there so that human can make a correction on the AI prediction, either passively or actively, so that ultimately the AI models can get more enriched in while giving the prediction. Then this, you know, the, as I mentioned that it can be an active, uh, the recommendation or the passive recommendation. If we think of the passive recommendation, EEG, electroencephalogram or the thoughts or the brain signal can play a lot of role in passively motivating the AI recommendations. So the, Cognitive corrections on the AI model can be done. So this is uh, the, the called the mind control, you know, the manufacturing. And uh, the while coming up with these concepts, I was reading a paper. Uh, the title as the Can Machine Be Conscious? Can 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 you sell your soul in eBay? If you read that paper, you'll get to see that nice concept has been postulated there. And from there, we are trying to derive the manufacturing similarity. And I came up with the concept like, if I take the example of a book, in my understanding, book is the outcome of the human thoughts. And if book can be archived, book can be recommended or referred later on for the understanding of the newcomers or getting more insight, then human thoughts, if I can record it and collect it and store it, and that human thoughts can also be a reference uh, in future. So the so that's why 
the we'd like to capture the human understanding or the human thoughts in a passive way because getting the human thoughts in an active way in the software may not be that uh, you know simpler for many many applications so we are working in this uh, the uh, you know the cognitive uh, intelligence perspective or the eeg electroencephalogram so that the brain computer interfacing can be made stronger and prediction of the ai model can be much more enriched We're working on the brain computer interface to see that the if i if a person is thinks about the red color robot gets to know what he is thinking and he is picking up the you know the the, the you know the same thing there robot is picking up the wrong thing that means the observations for the red and the green color, color you know the stimulates the brain and it, it, it the signals are uh, the emitted these signals characteristics are different if it can be captured properly then it can uh, play a lot of role similarly for the uh, the uh, machine health monitoring earlier people used to put their ear expert and get to see the uh, hear the sound and from the sound they used to tell that what is the health of the machine now if i can make the sound available to the uh, to the operator in a passive way remotely then that can can be a source of information for the to for the predictions of the health of the machine if i can if a human can identify the two images very easily let's say the cat and a dog then the if i but if i ask a dl model or the ml model to identify whether cat is a cat or dog is a dog it needs to have large number of the images of the cat and then dog but the human doesn't need that one so eeg signal has got lot of extra information the strength of the signal that in information which is carried by the eeg signal is much more informative but at the same time the, it is surrounded by the noise because the human brain can simultaneously think of many things so the noise has to be let's say the eliminated and then if you can pick up the signal and work on the signal very strongly then that can give you the good correlation so we are working on this aspect that whether eeg signal can be uh, can 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 be let can minimize the number of training data required for the dl model or rather in other way can i work in a simple ml model with a eeg signal uh, and predict the uh, the you know the image of the behavior with this last slide i'll like to stop my vision is that the coming days the uh, the what the soft floor would be very much uh, the uh, human less very less human would be there human would be there in the loop but they would be there much more in the uh, i would say the passive way so i don't know whether i'd be able to hear the sound the philosophy i'd like to mention that the the uh, the, the the operator would be coming up communication between the operator and the robot may be in the verbal mode initially and the instructions can be given by the operator verbally robot will get to hear what operator is saying robot operator will robot will check its digital health digital twin and see whether the operator's recommendation is acceptable or not if it is not acceptable then what should be the new changes what should be the new process parameter and the communication should be coming up through the the thoughts exchange of the thoughts
Yeah, so uh, the Dr. Siangam has already mentioned that uh, the, uh, the my association with IIT Kharagpur uh, uh, through the Department of Mechanical Engineering, and I'm also the uh, the chairperson of the Center of Excellence in Advanced Manufacturing Technology. I work in the field of uh, the welding industry 4.0, modeling and simulation of a manufacturing process. So I'm hardcore manufacturing guy, and uh, the and uh, the uh, you know these are the uh, the research outputs they any questions to professor Paul? maybe derek you have uh, any comments? yes yes sorry for that i was just <laughs> sitting here <laughs> yeah yeah no no thanks a lot i think thanks a lot uh, uh professor Paul. it was an excellent presentation actually and it's nice to see you again actually you know you have a very nice center and thanks for inviting me for for seminar some time ago so there's a lot of overlaps actually what what you do actually and to what we do here at wmg not only on principle level in terms of addressing this industrial relevant problems which we do but also in more specific level actually on for example on welding side which we have a quite a lot of activities in in our group here uh, process control, AI, hybrid digital twin. So I would say there is a quite a broad spectrum of overlaps. Perhaps maybe my suggestion would be that it might be interesting to see these complementarities and see how to structure some of the collaboration uh, in terms of, for example, let's say working together on um, some of the problems which you work with the Indian industry, we can work with UK industry, or European industry, or looking from proposal point of view. So I would say a very nice overview of topic which are very much relevant. Very <laughs> personally, I am biased, but personally, I think is a very, very relevant, very important actually one. You know, so we are very much open to discuss more details, perhaps about some of the what we can do together in between the IAT Karakpur your center as well as WMG here with with our activities. Mm -hmm. So thanks Thank a lot. You. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have rightly told. Actually, a lot of I visited WMG many a times, as you know, and uh, mm -hmm. the I found the similarity. In fact, we are trying to create this this uh, you know take this center forward, following the footprints of the the, the working principles of the WMG. And uh, the, fortunately, the, we, we are able to create uh, the sophisticated facility, which has got a lot of uh, the potentials to deploy into the manufacturing domain. And in India, uh, there is a tremendous scope for the AI, because I'm constantly mm -hmm. visiting many industries, mostly the, uh, the medium and large industries. Uh, the micro and small, that is a challenge, as I mentioned, and, uh, but we need to look, look into those challenges, uh, in fact. So uh, uh, you know it would be it would be really nice that uh, the, if, if we can come up with the WMG and Center of Excellence work together and uh, the come up with the low cost solutions for the uh, the industries uh, you know uh, working a project uh, funded by the industry is always uh, the welcome we'd be more than happy to work for that but if we can mm -hmm. work together in addition to that if we can work together to solve the industry's problem. That would be much more meaningful and contributive. So mm -hmm. we are very much desperate in doing that. Very much desperate. In doing that. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to uh, leverage your potential, the potential of the WMG. Uh, it's a wonderful place, and uh, the and also uh, the whatever we do have in, at our center of excellence. So maybe you can take this conversation offline, but it would be actually good to 
tap to this, uh, you know, great uh, opportunities, which I see basically, you know, in relations to, for example, welding process control, AI application, digital twin between both both uh, institutions, actually. So that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. OK, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. for. By the way, your students are coming very soon <laughs> visiting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So that would be also one way of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you, Derek. Uh, any other questions? I, I have one uh, quick question to know, like when you say zero defect uh, uh, manufacturing, uh, at what length scale you mean defects? Uh... I like, uh, you see the zero, uh, when you, um, you know, the manufacturing, the product, any product, if you say that it's, uh, it passes to the different stages of the manufacturing. Now, yeah. If I if I can come up with a zero defect product, that means each and every manufacturing step has to be uh, properly monitored and controlled. Okay. So from that perspective, uh, the, you know the we are talking about is the you know the zero defect pro uh, product. Okay. That means any operation that you take take up that has to be the defect free. It's, okay. Yeah. So you mentioned that the X-ray data you are getting, uh, yeah. you automatically analyzing using artificial intelligence uh, tools, yeah. right? So is it like you collect the data and then uh, the processing is happening or is it like simultaneously collecting immediately the data is being uh, no. analyzed? Oh, okay. No, it's an, it's an offline process. What happens oh. is that the industry, they collect the data, which is an analog format, then they convert it into the digital and then check it manually. So okay. what when we get the digital image and we the digital images are fed into our uh, the software and it is getting uh, the AI based software that checks the uh, the location of the defect, the and it classifies the what sort of defect it is and also does the measurement and followed by that the application of the protocol. Just a general question. Uh, there is a lot of buzz in the news that A can be threat to human jobs, all that. What is your opinion as working in this area? Yeah, this is the question I'm getting uh, almost from everywhere, uh, the, wherever I go for uh, the delivering this talk. Yeah, so the you see the uh, when computer came up, people thought of that it will uh, take up a lot of jobs and all. But uh, the in fact, the study says uh, as we go ahead with the automation and all, and uh, the lot of jobs are getting created, but in a different domain, different level. Maybe the, for the same job, it will not be available. But so that's why the continuous upscaling and reskilling is very much deeper. New, new jobs will be coming, coming up. If more jobs are coming up, study says that the around three to four people will be required to maintain a robot. So the so that means the main, more AI robot deployment, more of the maintenance oriented job would be coming up. So the person who is doing the job, maybe the same job is not available. He or she has to enrich or upskill or get some more training and then go to the next level. So the jobs will always constantly be coming up, but in a different form. 